try to be around successful people. That's a you, very important one. You are an average. you surround yourself you are, with. You're an average of who you surround yourself with. Uh. I'm Michael Spano, founder of Agents of Real Estate, and today we got our really special guest, uh, Julian Parentella from uh, Leisure Den Bank with All Hospitality Service and also Hotel V in Vaughn mm -hmm. on Highway 27. Julian, thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. How do you maintain a competitive edge in a rapidly evolving competitive sector like hospitality? It's difficult. Of course. How do you because, do it? Well, or do you even know? Is it more like... so? For the longest time, we were the shiniest toy on the block. And okay. then a bunch of other venues came up, which are beautiful, phenomenal. But for us to maintain our competitive edge, we have to identify and establish and market our unique selling proposition. Of course. What's unique about us? What are we offering? In my opinion, it's the years of experience. It's the warmth of Chateau Le Jardin. It's the family run element. It's that me as the owner, as the general manager, as the president, will be at your event, making sure that everything runs smoothly. It's 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 it, it's, it's hands on. It's, it's more hands personal. On. If if you're asking for a general idea, it's it's that. But how Lizard End does it, it's it's leveraging that USP, that unique selling proposition. It must be working because business is going. Would you? I hear great things. Thankfully, you know, people are receptive to it, which is, which is great. It's always a great thing when you're, when people are receptive to your business and your business offering. Well, you can lie to the people before they get in the door, but once they get in the door, you can't lie to them. They feel it. They, they see it. They feel it. They know it. They see it. And we wouldn't have repeat business if we lie to them just to get their, the contract Correct. signed, yeah. get the money. They're going to see it at the end of the day. They're going to feel it. They're going to see it. Exactly. And, and once they have a complaint, once they feel bad about something, they're 100%. never coming back and they're telling 10 people not to go. Exactly. Yeah. That's the biggest thing in our industry. It's it's the it's the gift and the curse. Yeah. So that we're, we're we're sort of prisoners to reviews. Anybody, if anybody tells you in hospitality that it's any different, they'd be lying. There's certain establishments, uh, you know, that date back to wherever that that can that can override that just based on their identity. You know, us in hospitality in the banquet hall industry, especially given that you know what we just follow them, we have, we have to maintain that level of service. I would say in our business, especially it's customer service. Yeah. For me. As soon as they took over, it was it was fine tuning each and every individual department. So from sales, when somebody walks in, how are they looking at my place? You know, the first the first thing that somebody does when they walk in, you know, is, is look around. How do you feel? What's that feel? Yeah, there's it's a lot of feeling. Important. There's They're a lot walking of walking into a house when you're doing a showing. Exactly, you have to leverage yep. that emotion. So when they walk into my office, how's my office look? You know, when I, I just renovated my office to a point where I think it's it's presentable now, but before it wasn't. I was looking around, I was walking in, I'm like, oh, this is, you know, if I was walking in, I would it not like it. It didn't make you feel good. How do the boardrooms look? Are they, how are they feeling when they're in this boardroom? How do they feel when when my receptionist greets them? You know, everything yeah, like that. Course. You have to fine tune every small detail. That's why hospitality is not for the faint of heart. You have to be, you have to be psychotic, in my opinion. You have to be psychotic. You have to be so detail oriented. Because one small detail can be the difference between you locking in that wedding or you losing that wedding. So, how do my what do my reception say when they greet? What do they say on the phone? How do they answer emails? Everything like that. You have to make sure it's, it's all on sync. top of that. It's all once geared towards salesman, the goal. Exactly. Once my salesman walks into the room, how are you? How are you greeting them? What are you saying? How are you offering them? You know the, the service. How are you pricing them? This and that. You have to understand. And I tell my sales my salespeople all the time. They're buying into you. You're the first person that they're meeting. They're meeting you first. So you're you're an actual representation of Chateau Le Jardin. Don't rely on the product so much. They, they're, there's, a, there's a personal visceral feel. There's so much more behind. Behind. They have to fall in love with you as yeah. a salesman. So they have to fall in love with you as a salesman. If they don't love you, they don't love the business. The product is what the product is. They'll go down, they'll see the room, they'll taste the food, and it is what it is. But if you're not able to sell them on you if you don't believe in the product yourself they're not gonna it's buy not it. gonna it's they're not, not gonna, gonna work it. yeah and then from there the coordinating department you gotta look at every facet of your business and ensure that everything's firing on all cylinders so how many people work at uh chateau Lizard then uh how big is the staff part-time and, and full full-time we've got about 20 full-time and then part-time you know the, the wait staff come in sometimes we use some some hot, some agencies for them to come in so you know, on uh, on any given night, on a premium night, uh, you know, we could have a hundred people down there. Wow, uh, we could have a hundred people down there. Quite the, 
with the assembly yeah. of people, yeah. Yeah, we could do, uh, you know, with with the use of divided walls, we could divide it to eight different uh, event spaces. With lower level. So eight Eastern, different event spaces Eight different once. rooms. Rooms. Yeah, so eight different individual you events. You could do individual, yeah, individual parties or individual events. Yeah. Individual menus. Cool. Different eight event types. Per night. Different ethnicities. Pretty yeah, good. yeah, so, you know, we are... Is there still a basement? There is. I haven't been down there yet. So there is. The renovation, it's been years. Yeah, well, I, I have another idea to renovate it, too. I have this Again. Idea. Yeah, I don't want to say anything until, no. it's, until it's done. Ah, you well, heard it first. Oh, yeah, you it, heard it first here. Yeah. Unlocked. There's a fantastic. You know what? You gotta say it. I'm gonna hold it. I gotta say it. it. I'll say it. There, there's say a place. It there's a place I went to it in in Montreal where they had a similar type of place with a lower level, and it was like this warm type of leathery cigar wine tasting feeling. They called the li they called the library. Ooh. TVs, upgraded Brandy. bar. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, uh, you know, watching sports games down there, a lounge type of atmosphere. You know, and, and they're doing private events on there as well. That sounds classy. I want to renovate it. I want to put a couple bucks into that, into the, into the, the downstairs. You got any names? The team. Yeah, I love the library. I can't steal from him. He's my friend. <laughs> in my truck. But uh, I, I don't know. the den. Yeah, I don't know. There's a few different ideas. <laughs> <laughs> the den. The den would be nice. Den's you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like... So they're still conceptualizing it, right? We we have, uh, you know, somebody putting the design together right now. And then, you know, see how much That sounds pretty cool. The hotel comes first. Let's do the, yeah, the hotel, let's do the hotel. Get everything digging. Out. Exactly. Get moving. Exactly. And uh, and that's underway, so that's good. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? Send us some pictures so we can post uh, some with the video as well. Absolutely. People can see what to yeah what to expect and, yep. and what's coming to town for sure. Um. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's man. pretty cool. Yeah. Hilton. Hilton. Running, Hotel V. Hotel yes. V, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um. How do you how do you handle all the stress and maintain a work balance like this? So all this stuff. Look, I know you're young, so obviously you can you, right, but you got listen, muscles. But yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's a lot, and you know, if anybody tells you that you're not going to feel stress in a competitive environment with with a lot of businesses, you know, they're they're lying. You're, you're you going to go feel hard if sooner or later you're going to crash. Exactly, work life balance. You know, on the weekend I ensure that I go out, that I distress. You know, I, okay. if anybody says you know don't go out, you need you need you need you need, you need not the words not outputs, but you but you need. What's a, what, what release? Was, really, I wouldn't say release, but yeah, you you need um, an, an avenue uh, at least just to complete that work-life balance. For me, you know, it's it's going out with my friends, having a good time, you know, here and there. But where it really comes in uh, is is routine. So my mother got me this book years back. It's called Tribe of Mentors. Got Tribe from, of Tribe of Mentors. Okay. Um, I like books. Can't, can't remember the name of the author, but it's okay. This book actually changed my life. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be quite honest with with, with everything. I, my life's been going in an amazing direction since. But um, Tribe of Mentors. It's it's a consolidation of of successful um, call it actors, CEOs, athletes. Okay. And he asked them the same question. And one of the questions asked them all the same questions, and they respond back. And one of the questions was, "What's one habit you can't live without?" And ninety percent of them. Kevin Hart, athletes, you know, uh, CEOs. I'm just naming Kevin Hart. Yeah. The first thing that comes back to my mind with meditation. Really? And I'm like, okay, if everybody's, you know, if all these successful people are meditating, this is something I should try. So I bought a book about meditating, did yeah. some research about it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, it became my morning routine. I wake up and I meditate 10, 15 minutes. First awesome. Day. And then you add different elements. You know, kept reading the book. And what, what's something else that they're doing? that's making them so successful. It can't just be meditation. And then I'm reading, you know, things to do with your brain, how to, how to augment, you, you know, neural pathways and, and how your brain thinks and how you handle stress. Oh, that's pretty neat. So the first thing I do when I wake up is I read. Reading support. Always read. No, Very important. Never go on your phone, look at Instagram, nope. look at your text, because, you know, looking at Instagram, you look at so many things and so many different emotions, your brain's or, already- Or even a Kindle. A Kindle, exactly. I go on my phone, I have an app called Headway. I read for, I read a couple pages, 10 minutes. Uh, now I got a dog, so now he's part of my morning routine. So he, just just that joy, him seeing you when you wake up, is great too. That that lifts you up too. Yeah. The fir I think the first half hour of your day is the most important. Yeah. It's Crucial. the most important. You know, Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday is when I'm you know really harping on that. You know, Saturdays is when I have you know my my time for myself, my personal time. But that Monday to Friday, those mornings are so crucial in, in just setting your day properly. That's pretty cool. So, tribe of mentors. Tribe Gotta of mentors. Gotta check that out. So then after after I after I meditate, I'll listen to, on my on my way to work, positive affirmations on YouTube, and then I get to work. Things are gonna happen at work that knock you left or right. But you know, having having a stronghold on how you react to them 
how your mind reacts to these things, how you how you how you process the stress. That's the biggest thing. You know, uh, that's pretty cool. I haven't I haven't had the best reactions to stress. I probably won't in the future, but at, at least you, you know work you, through you're, them. You're self aware. You're yeah. working through them. But that routine, that morning routine, is, it's everything from meditating, being in shape, and clearing the mind really starts to help. Being in shape as well too. Stress. And, yeah, and, I think and I think with coping with things. Exactly. Yeah. You treat your body well. You know, your body treats you well, right? So of it's, course. So that's really know, good. I gotta take a look at this book. Should it's phenomenal. I'll give it to you. Actually, I'm done. So I'll give it to you. What are five tips for teenagers or young uh, young adults uh, for making a bit? For getting out there and achieving their goals. Don't go out as much as I did and spend all your money <laughs> okay. when you're younger. So save, tip one, save. Save some money. Save. If you could save money when you're in your teens, you're already ahead of the game. 100%. I started saving when I was 25. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Because, you know, we, we don't think we don't think that we need to. We're young. We're irresponsible. We're going out. All we care about is our they friends. All, the adults told us to save our money. They it's all told like, us. It's not like people didn't tell us. And it's not like I didn't have yeah. good income coming yeah. in. I just dollar in, dollar out. Yeah. And... You know, it's just because that, that's that's how we all were. I would just want to enjoy myself. And yeah. you think, you know, you're going to worry about it later. But, you know, there's people that I knew that were saving from when they were 15, bought a house at 25. They're already ahead of the game. Yeah. They use, they they rent that property out. Yeah. Now they have an investment property. Of They're course. already ahead of the game. They have massive equity. Yeah. They already have that 200, 300 grand that they put down on the deposit in equity. And and they didn't maybe go out and go nuts when they were young, but now they're living exactly. large. And now when we're struggling to buy that house to save at 25 to 30, 30 to 35, maybe they bought their second property by now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, the main thing that I would say, you know, and I tell my, my sister, she's, she's the same age, 22 now. I tell her the same thing. Say it. Save. Just save. Don't go, don't spend as much as you can. You know, for, for we, me. We use that in a lot of our videos too. We, exactly. we talk about saving money. And I didn't have a value of a dollar when I was younger. I didn't care. You know, uh, it's, it's hard to teach. It's, it's hard. hard to teach. It's hard for the other person to comprehend because 100%. we all knew it. We uh, we were told. It was in our face. But it was it was more like, I remember my mind, don't worry, I'll just make it again. I'll, exactly. just, I'll just go ahead and get it. Sure. I'm young. What's going to stop no. me? I'll work next, I'll work next summer. But I'll you get older, the expenses get bigger. Exactly. You you start becoming less resilient to stress and of course and all that you need. Yep. Um, exactly. So you know, those dollars you get from your grandmother, Christmas, this that, save it. So that's a great tip. Saving. Save what else? Do you have another tip? Find, you know, it's kind of a cliche, but I would find that niche for yourself. Find for what you enjoy to do. What you enjoy to do. Well, that's a trick one because you never really enjoy to do it. That'll change, obviously, but I mean. The most successful people you see, and they're always they're always the, the Steve Jobs, the athletes, you know this and that. You know, some we we know the success stories, we don't know the failure stories. But if you can figure out your niche and what you want to do for later on in your life at a young age, I'm gonna add a tip in there. Then uh, the tip is to just try something. Try something. Just start. Try and fail. Yeah. Try and just fail. start because you'll find your way, even if you don't like what you're doing or you yeah. don't think this is for you. Just. Right. But this is all you have in front of you right now. Right. Just do it and try to do your best at it. You know, try to bring your best to it, even if you don't like it, even if it's not going to go anywhere, you exactly. don't see it in your future. And then you'll transition from there. Something will pop up and say, 100%. you know what? I'm going to take this route now. 100%. But you gave it your all. You learned some things. You practiced. Absolutely. Um, that's that's really good. But saving is by far the first one. I would say it's, a, it's the number one. How do we get people to save money? <laughs> <laughs> What's your approach to budgeting and managing your expenses effectively? Or well, do you not have one? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know, you you allocate first things first, you allocate, you know, high discipline. Di you, yeah, so so di discipline, discipline is hard, but you have to understand what's coming in. First understand what's okay. coming in. Your hard costs would have to go out. So your mortgages, your this, yeah, your that. Um, you know, identify those expenses, right? A minus B equals C. Figure out what that net is. And then what you want to do with it. You know, if you're a disciplined person, it, it's it's hard to be disciplined. We just acknowledge it, you know, for, for us as well. Sometimes for, for me but as well. You need well. to bring in, and again, tip, save. Right. You know, without spending too much. And sometimes I'm not Sometimes I'm, I'm not the best at saver, but I do think my investments have paid off. So you, you put those money in investments. You know, cool. Uh, yeah. Identify maybe a good stock, a good index fund. You know. Um, Are you a, a real estate holder for I rental am. income? Yes. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, not a good mortgage inter interest rate holder, but <laughs> 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 that, the net there is not doing so well right now. But, uh, you know, here in North Carolina. Things there, have changed over the last those, few months. Yeah. Hopefully those come down. Uh, yeah, I just refied recently. So it's, it, it's okay. It's, it's more or less in line, but hopefully those those rates come down uh, for, my, for my places. But, um, 
yeah, you know, identify what your net is from what you're taking in to what your hard costs are. And then, you know, if you're responsible enough, if, if you're disciplined enough, put some away. Yeah. Put some away. Put it in a TFSA. Put it in an index fund. Put it in... And it's not even for a rainy day. It's also for growth, too. If it's, put it's it in for, an index fund. For growth. Put it in something for growth. Exactly. A GIC, whatever, yeah. whatever you think. Whatever you identify as uh, le leverage other people's experience. Yeah. Talk, talk to your parents. Talk to somebody you know who's successful. The main thing is... Try to be around successful people. That's a you, very important one. You are an average. You surround yourself you are, with. You're an average of who you surround yourself uh, with. I agree with that. And that is I've always a big seen cliche, that. but it's so true. You're not going to succeed with people who don't care about success. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and if you put yourself above, with, around people that are where you want to be, you're going to be talking about things that they're talking about, investment opportunities that they're talking about. You know, you're, you're challenging your, each your other. Your mind's going to change. Yeah. You're going to want to be on their level. You want to, you won't always want to be the lower one. You, you're going to want to be equal to them. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So surround yourself with people that are successful. These opportunities will come to you. You'll see what they're doing that's working for them. And then uh, you take it, you take advantage of that. Yeah. I agree right? with that. People yeah. you hang around with and, um, your you network's know, massive. Massive. Yeah. We're lucky yeah. that we have, we have a good network of friends. That we every, have great friends, but everybody wants even to us successful. don't hang around every day. You know, of course. anymore. Of course. It's, I haven't yeah. seen some of them in a month, but yes, you know, we get together. It's like, of course. But when you get together, you're, you're talking. How's it going? How's this going? Right. And then you're seeing what's working for them, what's not working for them. You know, so, but there's different groups. And as you get exactly. older, there's there's different people with different motivations 100%. too that you either, you know, you surround yourself with and you're talking about negative stuff all day or, you know, you switch it up and go around people exactly. who are not speaking negative and, exactly. and have this positive mindset towards yeah. life. 100%. Yeah, that's very important. What's your definition of getting rich or being rich? You Billion know. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> my definition, my you know, I'm not just going to say this just for the, you know, the cameras or happiness or whatever. Happiness, happiness is, is a big thing. But you know where happiness comes from? Freedom. You know where freedom comes from? Money. Money. Yeah. Pick a number. I know what that number is. And don't stop until you get to that number. Well, I actually, which was pretty cool, is I heard something, I think it was on Instagram, but um, it was in a movie and it's it's so true. You know, I went through my own struggles with, and I, when I was young, I used a lot of debt to start my disposal business mm -hmm. and the assets were expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. It was trucks and, and containers, right. and, you know, drivers. And I was 21, so they wouldn't, to get a, I couldn't get a lease, couldn't get right. nothing. So I had to go through private private at the time was 12 or 13 percent on lease rates right? right and i'm thinking you it's know this is business this is what people do i must you know i gotta right. do it um what did your man say yeah he maybe do it do it do it no no he just wouldn't give me the money no but so I, he, I, what, did you ask him about rates and, and yeah, things like that oh he's, yeah, he, yeah. Shit. Right. he wanted me to learn the hard way of course he, he knew 14 percent was a lot which was the best thing which which he he said you know it's too much but, right. but how am i gonna do this mm -hmm. you can't do it i go no no i'm gonna do it i gotta figure it out Prove them wrong. And and prove them wrong, but just, just you know, I assume that's how you do business. Right. Um, so, you know, I did this business and, you know, I grew it. It was great. Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to do other things. So it was to hold me back from where I really wanted to be happy right. and do this. But what I learned is having all that debt, okay, and living right. on all that debt is not freedom. No. Freedom is buying a home with a 25-year roof paid for. Having a car that's paid for, that's going to last you 10, 12 years. Having enough money in the bank to pay your taxes, your basic maintenance fees. And that's called operating from a position of FU. Okay? The gambler. Yes. That's where I Great saw it from. Movie. Okay? And I'm telling you now in that state, I am rich and free, not because I have money, because I have no debts. That's the best way to live. Absolutely. You're free. You won't know anything. Uh, you sleep better. 100%. There's no anxiety and stress of where the next payment's coming from or, you know, whatever it is. It's right. just a whole different world. 100%. And I used to think Rich was having, you know, debt and equity and, and, and you know, I've got this much in debt, I got this much in equity and all this juggling around. Mm -hmm. But in reality, who's making all the money? Exactly. You, know, you? You, you buy the house and the mortgage company's making that kill. Exactly. They got you tied in for 30 years. It's not optic. It's not optics. I think nowadays, I think we see it, especially in our neighborhood. It's it's optics. People want to be seen in a nice house, a nice car, when they're when they're being crushed in in, in payments. But the, they're giving it to them. They're At the same time, them. they're giving them the money because they have because they have a different idea of what success means. They want other people to validate their success 
because they have the nice car, they have the nice house. When in reality, behind closed doors, that's not the case. Behind your closed door is success. But no it's funny how it works. With, happiness, with, no anxiety. When I meet certain people who are very wealthy, even some billionaires yeah. who are from an older generation, mm. you know, maybe 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, right. they don't care anymore. They don't, they don't drive the nice cars. They don't wear the nice clothes. Um, it's like, it's like once people know you have money, you can do whatever you want. So it's like, if you're projecting the way I kind of, I kind of look at things and I've been studying a lot on the, uh, the history of the financial markets. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's always common is there's always going to be losers. There's always going to be people who, uh, lose money. Losers. Of course. Yep. Uh, there's going to be obviously ups and downs, but there's going to be those who just want to make the quick buck. Sure. Of course. And it never works out like that. It's your, you have money today, but tomorrow, most people in the end have less. Exactly. Okay. Cause you're losing as you, as you go through life. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. 100%. I, I, I don't think I could have said that any better. It's, it's the people who know, they know that they don't have to prove anymore. Exactly. Those billionaires, I, I, 100%, you know, there, there's, there's a gentleman that, that we do business with as well. Um, I'll leave his name off of it, but he drives a, he drives a van. He drives a beat up old van that he's had his entire life. And I, and I remember asking him like, why don't you, you know, why don't you buy a nicer car? And the car I was driving was a two seater at the time. And I'm like, why'd you do something like this? And he's like, how many seats does your have? Does your car have? I'm like, two. He's like, mine has eight. He's <laughs> like, what is it that you But they don't, the, the and, thing I've realized at my age is, is expectations. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. Exactly. It's what you don't need. What you need to, exactly, now that we're on this point, establish what that means for you. Yeah. My happiness That's is different than yours. Part. It's it's subjective. It's not, it a, it's not yeah. objective. Establish what happiness means, means for you and don't stop until you get there. But the more you want, in material, the more you want that is in the term of, of fame or money, exactly. the less you're going to have later. I agree. The more disappointed you're going to be along the, the way. The bigger hole you you build for yourself. 100%. The bigger hole, 100%. Because expectations never play out the way we think. And even when they do, they never feel the way we thought they were going to feel when they exactly. actually do play through. Exactly. And that, that's why that's why when it comes to what we're doing, when it comes to the hotel, when it comes to the Leisure Den and the business that I have, another, another big... Um, from that book, Trevor Mentors, another big excerpt or um, lesson I learned from that is remove the ego. Ego. Ego is very big. Yeah. Ego from if you're starting any business, um, remove that ego because if you're thinking about you know how are people going to look at me when I but when I build this yeah. hotel, yeah. they're going to look at me like I'm like I'm the king, like yeah. I just like I just accomplished something. What are they going to think? How am I going to look? How much money am I going to make? Yeah. When you if that's all you're thinking about. You're not going to get there. It destroys most people. If you're thinking about building a good product, a solid product, you're focused on the objectivity of it. You can be proud you can be of proud your accomplishments. 100%. 100%. If you're focused on the ob objectivity, the success of the product itself, I think that there's there's no limit. I think anybody you look at in history, you look at a Steve Jobs, you look at, you know, um, a, a Gates or anybody that's built something, you know, an athlete or something, they never they never focus on, you know, all the money or fame or or... Any, any of those byproducts no. that would they, that they would have got from reaching the pinnacle that they yeah. reached, they just want to get there yes. because they want to get yeah. there for for themselves, and they completely remove their ego. Because anybody knows who's been working at something so long, you can't have an ego because you're gonna, you know, with us working on the hotel for so long and everything that we're trying to do, we we hit the doors didn't open for us all the time. We right. hit walls every every damn hit of the wall. No, 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 you can't do it for this reason. You can't do it for that reason. It's never going to work. We heard from everybody. You're never going to build a hotel. Yeah. You're never going to get there. It's never going to happen. I, I keep hearing it, even though that we're there. <laughs> I keep hearing it. It's not going to get finished or it's not going to be exactly. built. Or it's and always something. Yeah. Oh, believe me, there's times where you go to bed, you're like, shit, is, are they right? Is it not going to happen? But you keep going. And that's where I think the ego is completely removed is when you keep going, even when you don't think it's ever going to happen. And, and don't overextend. And don't, over don't overreach. <laughs> exactly. 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 One hundred percent. And that's what what ego, I guess, is is is. Right. You know, if Steve Jobs decided to become a, a multi billionaire and then start buying everything he wanted to play with. He exactly. wouldn't have time to work. He'd be playing yes. with the stuff. Exactly. So there, he, exactly. You know, we would not have these advantages right. and good things in life because he'd be busy, you know, driving around. With, sure. You know, partying and sure and not working. Hey, well, if you get a point where you're with 50 bill and you just want to call it quits, yeah. you do whatever you want yeah. at that point. Yeah. 